If you like animals, there's a good chance you've come across my work on the Brave Wilderness YouTube channel. That, or you might simply recognize me as that guy in the cowboy hat who's been bitten or stung by some of our planet's most horrific looking creatures. I have a pretty crazy job, but I absolutely love it. And I do what I do because I love animals. Now I'm willing to bet that each and every one of you has at some point in life been fascinated with animals. Maybe it was the roaring power of a lion, the seemingly menacing jaws of a shark, or the adorable nature of a baby bear. Animals are a part of the world that we live in, and it's impossible to not recognize their existence. It's even fair to think that at some point, you may have been enchanted by a certain species. If you dig deep, I'm sure you will find that moment which sparked what I call the golden age of animals, which I believe is an inherent fascination for the non-human creatures that inhabit our planet. This fascination usually begins at a young age and typically centers around a key moment or interaction with an animal. The spark ignited for me at a very young age and to this day is still rooted as my very first animal memory. I grew up on a farm in Northeastern Ohio and at the age of two years old, I was one day tagging along with my mom to help feed the animals when all of a sudden I found myself witnessing the birth of a baby horse. Now at this age, I wasn't necessarily saying much in the way of brilliant statements, but the sight of one horse seemingly pooping out another horse was definitely worth exclaiming at the top of my lungs. And I started screaming, baby horsey, baby horsey, mommy, that big horse is pooping out a baby horsey. Now the sight was something I would definitely never forget. And this moment truly marks for me the moment where the golden age of animals was born. From that day onward, I became obsessed with animals. All of them, from alligators to wolverines and every living creature in between. The stranger and more mysterious, the better. I read books, I collected toys, I drew and hung scribbled illustrations on my bedroom walls. When outside, I would spend countless hours exploring the wilderness behind my house, as it documented frogs, turtles, snakes, and a menagerie of other creepy creatures. For over a decade, I lived in the golden age of animals. And then one day, without even realizing it, I began to grow up. I was going through an evolution, right? And by the age of 13, the radiating glimmer from the golden age of animals was beginning to fade. And I was getting over my love for the natural world. I wanted to be like the other kids, you know, hang out with the boys and play sports. And see, here's the thing, in my school, the other kids weren't necessarily into animals, so it makes sense that I didn't want to be seen as that strange kid who was always playing in swamps. And I mean, come on, let's be honest, once you get into high school and the world of dating begins, it's not exactly the most romantic icebreaker to ask a girl if she wants to go play in the mud and catch snapping turtles on a Friday night. But here's the funny thing about the golden age of animals never really goes away. It might go dormant, but it can always be woken back up. My alarm clock rang loudly in the form of a man by the name of Steve Irwin. He broke into American media in 1996 as the crocodile hunter, and to this day is celebrated as one of the greatest voices for animal conservation that the world has ever known. It was his love for the natural world that helped to rekindle my fascination with animals. To me, C was just as big as a movie star or a professional athlete, and he got there by celebrating animals. The success of Steve's career was definitely a strong influence, and as he was bringing animals to millions of people across the world, I found myself in college trying to decide on a career of my own. I went to the Ohio State University and decided to pursue an education in the art of filmmaking. Now, the reason I chose this career path is I wanted to understand how to make an audience feel the way that I felt every time I watched a movie. How do you make them laugh, cry, or feel a wave of emotion that they can't seem to explain? Over the course of four years, I worked to perfect my degree in screenwriting, producing, and directing. While at the same time, I was constantly paying attention to the work that Steve was doing in the world of animals. At the time, I didn't necessarily recognize the influence, but Steve was subtly rekindling my love for the natural world, and the golden age of animals was once again beginning to glimmer. For a decade, Steve brought us animals in a way that the world had never seen. And then tragically, on September 4, 2006, the world lost one of its greatest voices for animals. I'll never forget the day that we lost Steve, and it hit me as if I lost a friend, a parent, or maybe better put, a hero. 
I don't know what it was exactly, but in the months following the passing of Steve, I couldn't stop dwelling on my love for animals. And I harbored a deep sorrow for all the children who, like me, had lost their hero, the person who was bringing them the joy and wonder of animals. It didn't take me long before I realized what it was that I had to do. Take my own love for animals and combine it together with my education in storytelling and filmmaking so that I could carry on that torch that Steve had lit. I truly believed that this was my calling and I went for it. From that day on, 100% of everything that I had went into building what is now Brave Wilderness. Over the course of a decade, my team and I worked to bring Brave Wilderness to life. And trust me, building an internationally recognized wildlife brand didn't happen overnight. It's been a constant uphill climb, but with a clear vision, we continue to work our butts off week after week, month after month, and year after year to bring people the up-close animal encounters that they had grown to love. We always had a clear vision right from the start, to be a platform for conservation and education, mixed in, of course, with a healthy dose of entertainment. Through our wilderness megaphone, we were able to become a voice for the strange, bizarre, and misunderstood species that could not speak for themselves, and we proudly brought their stories to the world. I could spend hours telling you tales about the larger-than-life encounters I've been fortunate enough to have with some of our planet's most iconic species, from sharks to whales, bears, wolves, lions, elephants, and so on. I could also tell you countless tales about the intentional bites and stings that I've taken over the years, which are unquestionably our most famous episodes. For some reason, people love to watch Coyote Peterson rolling around on the ground in agonizing pain. And while it's rewarding to have episodes that have racked up tens of millions of views, it's actually our episodes that push to make a difference for misunderstood species that mean the most to me. And here's an example of what I mean. This past year, my team and I produced an episode titled For the Love of Wolves. Now, it's fair to say that the wolf is one of our planet's most misunderstood and wrongly vilified animal species. And at certain points in history, they've even been driven to near extinction simply based on the idea that as humans, we have feared them. I got to work with the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, and over the course of a week was able to enter into an enclosure with wolves and truly connect with them. It's one of the most meaningful animal experiences I have ever had. And the connection was so strong between me and these animals that I was even given a kiss. That's right, I was kissed by a wolf. Makes you realize that they aren't necessarily bloodthirsty killers, doesn't it? I mention this experience because it serves as an example of what Brave Wilderness is trying to do. Create a new look and understanding for the animals that we were once afraid of so we can better recognize the importance they have on our planet. I believe it's moments like these that will truly influence future conservationists by igniting the golden age of animals. And here's an example of what I mean. In 2020, Brave Wilderness participated in a fundraiser for the conservation of rhinos, one of our planet's most threatened species. And of the hundreds of people who participated in raising support, it was actually a seven-year-old boy by the name of Drew who managed to fundraise the largest amount. Now, Drew worked tirelessly for weeks doing research, and then he built a pitch deck which he used as his rubric to help garner donations. At only seven years old, he is already dedicated to his mission, and I believe he will go on to do great things for the world of animal conservation. Drew is youthful proof that the golden age of animals exists and is now stronger than ever. The conservation of species has never been more important than it is today. And while there are thousands of hardworking people leading the charge, we all need to help the youth believe in their love for animals so that they can carry it forward into the future. Steve Irwin proved to me that the golden age of animals never dies. It might go dormant, but we all have the ability to wake it back up. I'm encouraging you to embrace this same idea that had such an impact on my life. Awaken your inner love for animals. And whether you choose to actively make a difference for our planet species or not, we all have the ability to influence the future generations around us. Kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, and even neighbors. Because it's our youth that will ultimately make the biggest difference for the future of our planet and the animals they call it home. Thank you.